I'll go ahead and get things kicked off uh, with today's agenda. So I'll, I'll be setting the stage of what typical scenarios and questions uh, that customers, SAP customers specifically, are 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 asking themselves and and scenarios that you might be encountering. And then we'll go through uh, what we refer to as Mindset Merlin or Merlin by Mindset, which is a, a, a BTP um, platform uh, and tool set that we've, we've been working through and working to develop over the past year or so. And then some of the apps and features associated with that. And then John will kind of kick us off uh, with uh, a demo and then we'll jointly do some questions and answers. Uh, we're scheduled to go, uh, I believe, about 45 minutes in 30 to 45 minutes in actual presentation, um, and then another 10 to 15 minutes in questions and answers at the at the at the end. So, with that, we will go ahead and move forward. So, let, let me kind of just set the stage for us. Um, and you may have seen some of these during the registration process. Um, these are questions. Uh, that you may be asking yourself or questions that, that we frequently are asking our, our customers as well. Um, so for instance, has your organization recently transitioned to S4 HANA? Um, we, we do know for a fact that there is a very large uptick year over year uh, in adoption of S4. The interesting thing that as you read through various articles and see various presentations, um, you're probably not seeing a whole lot of greenfield implementations. You may see some, um, but you are seeing an awful lot of brownfield or technical migrations. Um, and so uh, we'll, we'll kind of set the stage with that a little bit. Um, second, secondarily, are you looking for ways to make your workforce more productive? Um, this is one we frequently are asked um, because Mindset is a, a design thinking organization. We're also part of the App House, SAP App House network. Um, one of the things that we do and what's our core competency is we bring customers into the App House, which is based out of Minneapolis, Minnesota, and roll through um, design thinking sessions. And usually, the, usually those are human centric based or persona based um, type of scenarios. And vast majority of the, the apps that you deploy in, in the S, S4 Fiori space are persona-based. They are uh, human-centric based. So a lot of the innovations that SAP has been doing in the S4 space since 2015, all the way through current, um, those, those innovations primarily have come through the SAP Fiori uh, user experience or or user interface as well. Um, so just food for thought there. And then lastly here uh, in setting the stage is oftentimes the, you might be struggling to understand how to leverage your new SAP capabilities uh, with the Fiori user experience. And with that, I, you may, as a customer may have gone out and looked at the SAP websites and go, gosh, you know, I've been working in ECC 6.0 for years, um, and I'm seeing these new screens on SAP's website, or I've seen a presentation and, hey, listen, the, the user experience looks drastically different than what I'm accustomed to. Um, we'll be addressing some of that here uh, today. So just wanted to kind of set the stage there. Uh, continuation with that. These are some of the, the frequently encountered scenarios that we bump into at Mindset. Um, we, we mentioned firstly um, about technical migrations, right, or the brownfield approach uh, to S4 HANA. Um, vast majority of the time we get engaged when, uh, when customers are already doing, they're either already in the middle of it or they've just finished their technical migration and they're going, hey, we just literally uh, finished our technical migration. We're, we're now on S4, but nothing's changed. <laughs> so, um, and that's where mindset uh, comes to play and what, what we can do and help and differentiate in that space. But what we wanted to do also to is that first bullet point is address some of the preparing for. So I think today, Jonathan and I will hopefully help address some of those 
if you are looking to do a technical migration or you're looking to go to S4 in a full-blown greenfield transformation experience, meaning a completely new implementation, um, there might be some things that system integrators may overlook. Um, we've seen this uh, frequently, but also some things that the business, um, you as an SAP customer, may want to just be aware of and be cognizant of. Um, the second major bullet point here is you're preparing for an S4 on an implementation, right? So you may not have capital appropriation funded already, uh, but you're in the planning stages. So we're hopeful that today's content will, will be a little bit of interest to you, especially in the, the UX and UI space. And then um, lastly, there are, there are challenges that we frequently are asked about, right? Um, and we're asked to give, give an opinion on, on certain things. The first one is actually one that comes, comes in, up very, very often. Hey, listen, if we're going to be moving to S4, we currently operate in the SAP SAP GUI, um, but we now have Fiori. Everybody's used to SAP GUI. What do we do? Do we do a dual user experience? Do we do a single user experience? Do we do a hybrid user experience? Uh, how, how do we chop that up? Do we go big bang? Do we not? Um, hopefully, after this uh, webinar, Jonathan and I will also be publishing a, uh, a blog that will address some of these uh, scenarios that, that we're, we'll be addressing. We may not address all of them in the webinar today, but you'll at least uh, see some of that. But that one happens to be probably number one on the list that I get asked questions on. Um, secondly, uh, hey, listen, our users aren't benefiting, quote unquote, fill in the blank, right? We're not benefiting from the new uh, SAP Fiori user experience, or we're not benefiting this particular group of people could benefit from something different than what they have had in the past to make their jobs easier, simple, standard, more efficient. Uh, thirdly, um, we kind of addressed this a moment ago, but hey, listen, our screens don't look like what is on the SAP website. And the reason for that is, is a lot of the S4 HANA uh, enhancements, uh, greater than 70%, by the way, of the new functionality, um, actually comes via the Fiori user experience. So if you're looking for enhancements or looking for new ways and new processes of doing things, uh, chances are you're going to have to implement Fiori in some form or fashion to enable those functionalities to be deployed across your, your, your business. And then we frequently get, how do we quote, quote, dot, 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 fill in the blank, right? How do we do this? How do we do that? How did you do that? What, what are the experiences that you're seeing? So this kind of sets the stage of what we're wanting to, to talk about today, uh, specifically with uh, Mindset Merlin. I'll pause there for a second. Jonathan, anything to, to add before we jump into further sections? No, I think that was all great. I mean, the, the, the biggest writing on the wall, obviously, is, is from you know, when we look at the 14, 15,000 Fiori apps that are available today, there's no net new development going into backend GUI. Right? All of the net new use cases, all of the automation, all the things that the SAP is touting as part of BTP or as a part of the new platform are happening there. And so as, as a part of this, you know, in this idea that we really just wanted to make sure that people were aware of all those things out there, you know, and I can, you know, we'll see in the tool later just exactly how you can kind of search for things or look at assessments or, you know, all the different things that are there. But no, that was that was it from my side, Adam. Thanks. Excellent. All right. So what we're going to talk about here is what, what we refer to as mindset, uh, uh, Merlin by mindset. And Merlin is a tool that we built on the BTP platform. Um, and it's a it's a platform in and of itself. And so there are different apps and features and functions that the, the, the actual uh, platform provides. Um, it, it, in two bullet points, if I may, um, it's a SAP BTP cloud-based intelligent automation platform built to automate the SAP Fiori UX discovery through delivery uh, experience. Um, so this is meant to be uh, a customer-facing tool 
Uh, so for instance, a, a particular use case might be uh, you as a SAP customer may have a global business process owner network that you have various work streams with work stream leads that they those business process owners are tasked with making sure that the release strategy for their various work streams are up and current or that they are planning uh, accordingly. And so this tool is meant for, for them. Uh, likewise, another scenario that we we've, we've uh, recently were at a, a customer innovation day for BTP in Chicago, and we actually had some, I will call them competitors, but they will also potentially be mindset clients in the future um, where they may uh, also be able to leverage and license this tool set that they might be able to help their customers in investigating and discovering and exploring the Fiora user experience with their customers as well. And then the second bullet point, it, it is meant to be an all-inclusive uh, platform that, that you can leverage in your UX re revolution. So it's not a, a once and done type of platform or an app. It's something that you can have installed on your, your environments and you can continually use because it's always refreshed um, with the latest uh, of the back end, and the back end in this case happens to be the Fiori app library, which we will uh, discuss a little bit more in length as we we move forward. So, what is it? So, this is the kind of the use case or problem statement associated with with where we initially started this um, last year, um, or I guess it would be earlier this year. Um, Today, in today's environment, it's it's what standard Fiori applications work in a customer's business and SAP landscape. It's also time consuming to install, showcase, and deploy applications uh, with success. This happens because the SAP landscape is vastly different uh, for all customers and tools developed to help navigate this and not e easy to use, automate, or layout manner in this particular tool set can help them in that manner. Um, I'll pause there. John, anything there? I I would just say, you know, Fiori has been out for seven plus years now, uh, between seven and eight. So obviously started with those famous 15 to 25 paid for apps before they made it free and let people kind of go wild a little bit. But um, it, it's interesting that over those seven or eight years, this is this is still a really hard conversation, right? We have a lot of systems implementations. We have you know the tried and true method of updating and upgrading an, an SAP landscape. And just when we were when we were looking into this deeper and deeper, this is still a difficult problem for folks today. And that's that's really where where we landed with you know spending a lot of time within this area is just making sure people are aware of what's out there, how it's out there and, and how we can go forward. So we wanted to do this in a holistic way to really, really focus in on a true, true problem statement that we're trying to solve for folks that we, that we hear from every day. Okay. One, one other thing I, I will add, we, we have uh, on this particular webinar focused on the S4 side. Um, however, this tool set actually can be run for ECC level uh, transaction codes in if there were Fiori apps back in the 1.0 and 2.0 phases of, of iterations of Fiori, you could actually uh, go through some of that. Uh, but obviously the vast majority of the functionality uh, that really benefits customers is really on the S4 side. Um, so we do have the ability of limiting uh, what scope you are looking to, to deploy to. So. Okay. Did I miss a slide? Yep. Okay. So we we briefly covered this a little bit, but Merlin, it, what it's meant to do is the research planning, selection, the delivery and measurement of the SAP standard Fiori applications. And I, I say standard because um, obviously if there are custom applications, our tool is not smart enough to to take in, hey, listen, and analyze the app of, oh, this used to be, for instance, if you were in purchasing an ME21N, and then it's also been customized in these six different ways. The tool doesn't do this. So 
um, what we we traditionally what we do is we take uh, an STO3N extract um, and bump it up against the standard um, Fiori apps. Um, and so the tool does uh, allow you to look through, uh, explore, research, plan, select, deliver, and then ultimately measure how that app is going to be used um, in the SAP environments that it's deployed in. Um, currently, um, it's comprised of, of three different tools tools or, or apps. Um, one is called the Fiori App Finder, which is the primary tool that we, we were talking about. Um, and then there's the Fiori App Analyzer and the voice of the employee, which uh, Jonathan will cover off in here in just a few moments. Um, but before that, what I'd like to do is just quickly reference um, how Mindset uses the S4 Fiori acceleration platform here, or Merlin, um, in the, the various stage of, stages of a project. So you'll look on the far left-hand side, these are typical uh, things that we do um, from a mindset consulting perspective. Uh, so just bulleted items. So SAP, we have SAP and UX experts we are very much a design centric organization and we take a, a design centric uh, approach and that happens to be persona based or human centric based. Um, then there are the two primary ways that we, we, we do our, our assessments. One is with a fit to standard approach and then the other is a fit to purpose. Um, if you're looking to do a fit to template, um, usually that's just a rinse and repeat, right? And so we, we, we don't necessarily say that we do that. We can, but it's the two primary ways is fit to standard, meaning, hey, listen, here's here's the standard approach. Here's the standard process. How does how do your business processes fit into that, and which apps will will function in that that manner? And then likewise with fit to purpose, um, which is a little bit different, but it it usually coincides with the larger enterprise uh, strategic visions. Um, and then there are usually beyond the fit to standard component of it, the fit to purpose actually says, okay, these, these particular apps need to be extended in some way, or these particular processes need to be extended in some way. So then we do go into either extensibility, um, something beyond um, the core S4 and move into custom app development or a third-party tool set that will allow you to integrate back in through BTP or SAP adjacent technologies into your, your core. Um, uh, the fourth bullet point on the left-hand side, rapid agile deployment, that is what we specialize in. Um, so if you are looking for a consulting firm to come in and do a waterfall type of approach, that is not how we work. We work in a very agile manner. Um, backlogs, going through things, making sure that we're we're covering things off in the, the various uh, sprints and epics as we are starting to move forward. So the whole MVP process is very top of mind for us. And then moving through the various releases and iterations as we move forward. Um, Jonathan also, he leads our, our Mindset Labs, which uh, Mindset Labs does two things. Uh, primarily uh, accelerators and tools. The accelerators are actually for projects that we do internal um, so that we can actually deliver quicker, faster, and more efficiently. And then the tools are things that we can actually uh, IP that we've built that can be deployed, such as Merlin, as we move forward. Um, we do tend to focus on, on stakeholders. And when we go into a client, we one of the first things we do is sit down with those stakeholders to understand what the whole whole um, strategy is and what what the define what that last bullet point is on what are the su successful outcomes. Yes, on a project there may be deliverables, but if we focus on successful outcomes, we will have better results not only from a customer experience perspective but also from a user experience perspective as we do that. The table that you're seeing here um, from uh, the, the explore, discover, design, deliver, run, and scale, these green boxes that are in there, they some of them straddle multiple work streams or uh, phases of the project. 
and that, that is fine. The first one at the very top, that is what we, that is our bread and butter. We have a full blown design thinking practice that they, that's all they do. We have designers, we have strategists that that's all they do. Um, and they take, come at it from a little more uh, SAP agnostic approach first and then they move into the technology once the the design thinking sessions have been completed um, and moving into high fidelity examples and then moving into actual uh, projects as we move forward. And then we have the mindset transformation accelerator. So uh, the the things that we we will be talking about here here in a few minutes with John and he'll walk you through demos on, on that. And then the customer uh, the custom and standard Fiori app design. It's very important to, to really take into consideration the fit to standard. Every single project should be doing some, some sort of fit to standard um, assessment, regardless of what you think you need at the very end. The fit to standard, you'll <laughs> it's been mind boggling to sit with customers and watch their eyes kind of light up as they go, well, that didn't work that way in ECC or that didn't work that way when in my, our old ERP system. And they start realizing that, hey, listen, S4 core processes and core functionality in the, those Fiori apps is actually quite dis, distinct and, and um, specialized and they can do something different than they could before. So we always recommend making sure fit to standard is done on the front side then you start saying, do I need to extend it? Do I need a custom app? So just food for thought as we move through that. And then there's four little boxes down at the very bottom, right? Quite often we're asked to do, hey, listen, let's do a SAP to Fiori app assessment. Um, this could be as, as small as two to three weeks and can be as long as two to three months. Um, it just depends on the scope and scale uh, of that. But the exploration of Fiori is usually top of mind in, in that, that particular area. And then BTP and UX extend, extensibility discovery. This is an area that we do in, in discovery, in the discover uh, uh, part of the project. It helps a customer start to realize, hey, listen, when we move to SAP, S4 HANA, usually they're moving into the BTP space. And BTP is something that's new uh, for that particular customer nine times out of 10, maybe eight out of 10 times. Um, usually it's not deployed before they they move to S4. Uh, so they're, they're learning about it and what the capabilities are. So that's something we were asked to do on a standalone basis as well. And that's also a way that we get engaged even on a host implementation of a technical migration, they go, oh, we're gonna do deploy Fiori via P BTP as opposed to embedded. And that's where the conversation starts to go. And then Fiori uh, user experience profiling. So taking those, uh, the legacy, if we call them legacy security roles, because security roles in ECC are one thing, right? It's a, it means something, there's a job, there's a role and a responsibility associated with it. But with user experience in Fiori, that gets a little bit flipped a little bit and it's very persona based, not necessarily, there is security associated with it, but it's not purely security based. Um, and then lastly, the optimization of Fiori infrastructure. Um, this is one where almost, like I said, vast majority of the time, we get engaged on the backside of, hey, listen, we've gone through, we've implemented S4. In, in some instances, they've implemented Fiori as well. But one thing that they've noticed is, hey, listen, the, the user experience is not as quick or as nimble or as agile as we were expecting. And our, our uh, Fiori experts and, and analysts are very, very good at optimizing that Fiori infrastructure. I'll pause there and pop it up to John uh, because I think you're going to take it from here on out. 
Yeah, it sounds good. No, that was a, a great description. I mean, we see in, in so many S4 HANA projects as, as you go through the different areas, especially that exploration where, you know, you can almost bring Fury up in a roadshow to to your business counterparts and your your customers within your your business. And like like Adam said, you know, it, it blows their mind that I can know oh, I can now do embedded analytics right here within the platform. Um, I can do enterprise search. I can look for a sales document number. Like I, I had no idea I could do this stuff. You know, I'm used to GUI from from the past ten years of my my life. So um, it's it's fun things to be able to go through with folks. But yeah, let's let's jump into just um, so I'll explain the three tools very quickly, and then we'll jump directly into the live demo. We've got probably about fifteen or twenty minutes to just jump into things. Uh, uh, pretty live. And the first one is going to be where we focus all the live demo for, for the webinar today. So our Fiori app finder, part of the Merlin platform, is really the, the nuts and bolts of the assessment phase and being able to look at what applications match you and your system. So Adam mentioned that ST03N report. That's exactly what we take from a basis perspective to be able to do this. And we input that into the tool. Um, and, and out comes a lot of the, the standard Fiori apps that match the T codes that your system is using today. Doesn't matter whether that's ECC, doesn't matter whether that's S4, we can work with all the different version levels there just to be able to showcase. And, and this is a, a, a good part of the assessment as well as, okay, here's where you are today. Maybe you know we've got 200 apps that you might be able to, to even look at for an ECC6 type environment when you go forward and when you start your plan into a, a current S4 version, maybe that's, you know, you've locked on a release level of 2021 or or the first release of 2022 here that's that's now available. Um, you can start to see that that 200 mark almost reach the, the two to 4,000 mark, depending on your system usage, how big, how big of a system you're running, how many systems are out there, things like that. So these are all really, really fun tool sets to be able to go through and we'll walk through this this end-to-end -end wizard. So I'll, I'll save the, uh, the the magic of Merlin to the live demo for that one. But um, the next two tools are things that if if you're if you're familiar with mindset, you've seen these in the past, and we want to make sure that these are these are still available for for folks. And you know when we look at the different project timelines, like Adam mentioned, from explore all the way to that scale, that run and scale mode, we really see this as the run application. So we can install this application within a Fiori launchpad, and you can actually tell real time exactly who's using the applications that are out there within the system. So this application has was built um, maybe start start of life probably around two years ago and, and updated over time. Um, but the the dashboard and the cards and the and the reporting has very much stayed the same. So when we're looking at how many active users are in the system, what browser are they logging in as, what device types, what's the loading time of our apps, it was meant to really be at, at first an administration tool to be able to look at how my environment's running. Uh, but, but over time, it's also become a, a really good product owner tool. So if I'm a product owner within a finance organization or within a sales organization, I wanna see as, as an owner of that area from a functional level on the business side, I wanna see who's using the apps that we've deployed and where it makes sense to, to actually invest our, our UX dollars. You know, what, Where are resources? What are people using? Are we having failures in some of the things that are out there? This will give you a lot of that pinpointed insight into who's using what and when and from where on what device. So this is a really interesting one that, that we can talk a lot more about and we can have um, one-off demos on, on this tool as well. But the next one is called Voice of the Employee. So very much ties in with um, exactly the, the, the Fury App Analyzer functionalities. And so you may have seen the Voice of the Employee card on the, on the App Analyzer dashboard. What that's meant to represent is a system-wide overall score of how people are feeling about the applications that they use day in and day out. And fairly, fairly quick hit, fairly easy. This also is in addition to the launch pad that comes out. And you really get a tracking of, you know, just kind of the, the five smiley face score that the SAP has and other um, consumer companies have and, and other metrics like, uh, like some of the Qualtrics activities that happen, but really, on a scale of one to five. So one being, I can't imagine trying to log into this ever again, <laughs> versus five is, this is the happiest and most successful SAP experience I've ever had in my life. You know, rating somewhere somewhere in between there, uh, exactly how you're feeling about the application you're using. So this is a way for those 
real end users, you know, those persona-based end users using individual applications to give you comments and feedback. And we've seen this be a really good tie from business to IT. You know, we can really make sure as an IT department, we're listening to people's feedback and we're taking action on that. So we can't do that without data. And right here in our, you know, it's, it's maybe a little bit of an eye chart for folks for the screenshot here, but just off the bat, you can see there's probably three areas or three applications I can make a lot of UX improvement in. Um, I think on this one, it was create billing documents and some of the warehouse monitor activities and things like that. But um, you can see other areas are, are working really well and people are having great experiences. So we can do that on an application level. And then as you drill into the feedback from that, you can actually get to a, a user by user level. So you can try to engage employees that may, may be struggling with some SAP experiences. Maybe it's just some, some learning and upskilling that they need. Maybe it's maybe it's to be able to dig in and really find more of a systemic problem that we can invest in and, and change with a with a design led approach. So that would get you into you know a full design thinking workshop. Maybe the standard app isn't for you. Maybe there's things we need to to customize or or build on top of to be able to provide that. So those are kind of the the run and scale tools as a, as a part of the Merlin platform. But from here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen out. And thanks, Adam, for that. Let me jump into our uh, BTP environment here. So let me make this. Okay, so just, just very quickly before we jump into the actual applications, everything that we build internally here at Mindset um, happens in, in SAP BTP. So all of our accelerators, all of our, our cloud development that we can push into different environments, whether that's from a a SaaS-based experience or actually pushing that into a live environment of a customer happens here in our SAP BTP account. So we're, we're kind of early adopters in, in building everything within the, the system here and have a ton of great things to say about it. So if you're going down the, the path of looking at what you can use BTP for, um, that's kind of the, the, other, the other hat I wear uh, on the Mindset Lab space where um, a, a subset of our folks lead workshops for clients and do POCs and really get into the meat of, of BTP and the services that are out there. So what I'm showcasing today is actually a, a launch pad. And I'm just gonna show you the different types of launch pads and the launch pad services that are out there. Um, I see a couple of folks on the phone. So none of this is possible without, without the team here. I think um, Avalash is on the phone. So he has set up a, a ton of this and just is a great SAP BTP architect that, that leads a lot of these areas. But you can see, you know, we have many different launch pads within this SAP BTP launch pad service. And once we run these, these can be separate users, separate customers, separate, separate areas of BTP that you can give access for individual things. So even, even us in, internally, we use this as an employee portal for some of our different experiences and applications and, and areas that we do. But today we'll go to the Mindset Accelerators website. So I've already got that open on another tab here. Um, or for refresh, I'm sure we've timed out by the time we've been talking here for the hour. Uh, but what this is, is, is we also host um, all of our accelerators out here within BTP and the Launchpad service and are all hosted as UI5 applications that sit on top of that. So you see the Merlin platform here, we've got a couple of different releases that we work on. So as, as Adam mentioned, everything that Mindset does in an agile based format, um, that happens very much internally as well. We try to run everything that we do internally just as we want to run a customer project. And so we have a couple of different releases here of the App Finder as we get through all of our, our um, our backlog and, and release cycles. So we're we're going to play with the App Finder 2.0 version today. I can tell you that a lot more um, automation pieces are are being tested right now in our App Finder 3.0 version, uh, where we're actually automatically um, installing, configuring, and and going live with standard Fiori apps out of the box. And so that's that's something we'll be able to showcase very very soon for you. The other things in the accelerator library are just very, very common pain points that we see from customers um, all along the way. So we've we've uh, had a lot of interest in plant maintenance over the years, um, quality management, retail apps, um, anything that you can think is a very mobile or or a uh, a job to be done that's you know not not only behind a desktop all day, right? Um, if we have uh, customer sales management dashboards, you're out there in front of people or or taking calls, you're looking at some of the warehouse management tasks of inbound 
uh, receiving tasks or shipping tasks or you know the pick pack and ship areas. And another product that we've built over the years is also warehouse wise, where we're actually looking at uh, what are the real time metrics and performance of a warehouse from a warehouse manager perspective. How do I need to move people around on the floor? How do I make sure our trucks are leaving the the docks on time? How do I make sure in, in some of the transport management areas where we're actually scheduling trucks to be at the dock at the right time without backups? Because a lot of those folks are very concerned. I, I get paid by the mile. I want to be on the road. So um, it's a lot of lot of fun use cases out there. But let's um, let's jump into what we're what we're here for today. So the App Finder version here that we're looking at is a wizard based tool. And the very first thing that we can do is we can select our type of option that we want to go after. So if I'm just coming into the tool and I want to do some quick research, maybe I'm I'm on an S4 project as a, um, a plant maintenance lead. We'll take that example again. And I'm just curious, hey, what, what applications are out there in, in one of the, the T codes of that? I don't have to select a version. I can just kind of hit a T code and see, see what's out there. You know, I've got four apps right away that I can start to take a look at. Every one of these links will actually go directly to that specific applications out there in the Fury Apps Library. And so some of you may be, may be thinking, hey, I can, I can get a lot of these things from the Fury Apps Library. And that's very true. Um, one thing that we found by using the Fury Apps Library over and over again over the years is some of the ways to search, some of the ways to get to a consolidated list, some of the ways to get to some functional components aren't really conducive to uh, to doing this quickly. And so within what you'll see here is within a, a five minute time span, you know, we'll pick a standard upload. So we have an upload template from our STO3N report, or we can upload the whole STO3 transaction report. Um, we can pick a version level. So let's pick, uh, we'll pick just our latest version here today. And I've got a, um, a transaction usage report, I think out here that we're gonna use as a sample. Um, and I can show this, this is a spreadsheet. It's only ha it only has two columns and it's sorted by usage. And so from that STO3N report, we take a, a download snapshot of that CSV file, convert it into XLS. And what we have is two columns, T code and number of dialog steps. So we figured along the way between compute time and number of dialog steps, we could really figure out what the what the most used transactions were in the system and sort them from high to low. So as, as this runs, and we'll upload the, the full file here, um, we should see exactly their system usage and, and how long it actually um, looks at, at developing a full list for the number of dialogue steps that happens in each of those T codes. So if I were to, um, let's see if I can share my whole screen here for a second. Um, I told you, so I'll, I'll jump through the demo here quick and then maybe we can get it with, with questions. Um, within the T codes, you can see MD04 comes up right away. So if I were to look at that, that T code report, I see MD04 as you know, uh, a million processing steps for the month that's out here. So we do this as a 30-day 30, 30 increment, um, a standard STO3 report. And from here, there's a couple things we can do. You know, we can we can start to analyze this list right away. Um, we can look at some of the some of the other fields that are involved within the report. So if I wanted to add some more fields, we're we're pulling a lot of different things in here of what SAP provides out of the box. So I can look at my groups, catalogs, roles that are that are out there from SAP. I can look at the OData services that are that are needed to actually run this application and retrieve data from the back end. Um, I can do some research on just the, the UI5 apps and I can see if they're installed in my system just, just to take a look. Um, these are the most common areas from, from more of like a business functional perspective that we see first. And the other thing we can do is we can kind of flip this on its head just, just from here before we start to select apps and move through the wizard. Um, what we've done is we've done some, some high level reporting right out of the gate that says how many standard applications fit each one of these areas. And this, this is really cool just to be able to look at and, and research it version to version. Um, I can't tell you the number of times Adam and myself have come in here and flipped back and forth in between version levels and ECC and, you know, oh, wow, there was only 105 apps, but now there's 4,000 <laughs> depending on version levels. It's, it's very interesting to play with. And um, so as we go through, you can kind of see 
you know the the different um, the different functional areas. So again, anything that's tagged from SAP as uh, a manufacturing app or a finance app, and you will see there is a little bit of of carryover. I think I don't know if you, you've seen that as well, Adam. There's a little bit of carryover between the applications that may be listed in in two different functional areas. Just means you know that T code is is probably like MDO4 or MIGO or um, you know, ME23 and where there's a lot of different functionalities within that, that a lot of applications are trying to meet those individual persona-based components of that T code in the back end. So it's not always a one-to-one -one mapping for sure. You know, as we saw, MD04 has <clears throat> 10 different applications on its own, for example. But the the other really interesting ones in, in the in the versions here is by application type. So you can see, you know, out of that list of what we have 2,800 that came up on our list, 1,600 of those over that are still SAP GUI apps. So this means I've created a tile. I can log in from an SAP Fiori Launchpad, and I get my same GUI experience. So it's basically an ITS server or a web GUI. And John, if I may, this is where, if we go back to the beginning when, when we were discussing about dual UI or hybrid UI, um, a lot of times uh, our customers, when we, we've been working with them, they said, hey, they're, they're executing in, in SAP GUI. Well, with this, when you start moving to, to deploy, deploy uh, SAP GUI apps, you can do that still within, within Fiori and still have that harmonized um, user experience and, uh, through one UI, be, meaning um, uh, Fiori as opposed to them going in, logging in over at SAP GUI and then coming in and logging in in, in Fiori, they can actually have that harmonized user experience moving forward. And that is vast majority of the time, that is our recommendation as, to our customers as we move forward. Um, make sure that, that the, the everything is where it should be, uh, very readily accessible, not having to have additional keystrokes when not needed. So. Yeah, absolutely, and it makes that holistic experience even better from a you know an actual persona or role based uh, definition of that job, and that's you know coming down here we also get kind of some of the extracts of okay what is that job role, and and where is that exactly? So uh, I'm going to jump back over. Oop, let's see Sorry about that. Let's keep jumping through, and um, within let's see. I might have to refresh this. Um, so, so within the tool itself, you know, once once we go through those those few different steps, here, I'll just refresh the full the full browser here. Uh, once we go through each of those individual steps, uh, what we actually see is that between the you know where we go from the from an individual application, I can see exactly you know what releases this individual app was a part of. So this one's been out there since since fifteen eleven, for example. Um, as we go through that, we can we can actually see where this where this comes on board and and what releases are there. And so when we go through that, I think this is still trying to try to reload a little bit. There we go. And so as we as we do our report run, you know, as as if I was um, running this for our 2022 version, we've got our upload template. We run against our transaction usage and we get our, let's say 2,800 apps. We'll just select a few and actually get through the rest of the process here of actually the, the you know, what we want to look in the back end to activate, catalogs, groups, and roles, mapping, and then and then some review. So let's say I am, you know, wanting to take care of that, that high, high level use case, our MD04 applications. Maybe I want to look at my internal requirements and production orders. So Maybe I don't want to implement an entire version. You know, I can always do the blanket select all. Um, I want to take this maybe on a on a use case by use case. And so for production planner, I want to make sure that we can install just a few apps for them. So we can take these forward within the application, within the wizard. And now that I'm at the activate stage, I can really look in detail on, on what these things are. So I can go into a backend system and actually match, are these installed? You know, via cloud connector, we're connecting to a backend system to be able to look at what's there and if these components match to be able to actually 
you know, save and proceed with, with the technical configuration that needs to happen to actually turn these on. Um, so a little bit different fields here, for a little bit more technical versus the business focus on, on the first screen. And so if, if these are all good, I can save and, and proceed with, with what I want to do with these three applications. So where I come in to the catalogs, groups, and roles piece is this is our Fiori Launchpad, right? This is who I want to see the applications, um, what groups they're a part of, and what, what role I can give to this to make sure that we can assign, um, assign, assign these things out. So I'm going to use our same example here uh, we've used in, in a few different demos, but basically what we're doing from this perspective is we're adding and we're creating catalogs. So we're creating both a, a business catalog and a technical catalog or just one or the other. And it, as we go through this, you know, we can say our uh, plant operator person. And this is literally just adding some configuration items into uh, what we're going to submit to the, the Fiori Launchpad config. And so as we go through this, we're adding catalogs, we're adding those same groups, and this is saving you know, to, to BTP at the moment. And then this gets pushed wherever that Fiori Launchpad actually is. And then the actual role on the back end and what, what we're working on for that release 3.0 version you see is, is being able to integrate with a back end system security roles. So if I have a, uh, a composite role set up for my Fiori applications, and I want to make sure that I'm using my customized uh, customer security roles versus just the SAP standard roles that are out there. Um, we haven't met many customers that use SAP standard security roles in a productive system. So we want to make sure that, that we're connecting to the, to the right stuff you're going to use going forward for, for people actually, actually going live. And so as these are configured, this is really now just a mapping document. And our mapping document needs a role, a catalog, and a group. And so we can do that throughout the application and throughout the, the number of Fiori apps that are out there. And we can continue on and really look at, you know, hey, did you did you do your stuff? <laughs> We've got some good exception reporting there as well. So we just fill these out quick and then we can go to our review stage in, uh, in the second release here of the tool. And so as we see, you know, the, the ending point for, for this is to download a configuration report. And so I can uh, skip the application survey for the moment, but basically this is now downloading a, a direct Excel spreadsheet of everything we need to go out and configure these three applications. And this is exactly what we're sending to the backend in going after the, um, the IWFND maintenance transaction uh, to be able to activate the OData services along with these applications to go after the UI5 app itself you know, we're, we're giving the business roles uh, if we want to use those or giving the UI5 names and, and everything else to be able to go through. And so in a span of, you know, what was that 10, 10 to 15 minutes to explain through, we've, we've looked at what apps work for us. We have selected a few apps that I want to make sure that we're, we're meeting as a, as a production planner need. And we're going actually after all of the technical configuration components that, that we need to do that creating catalogs, groups, roles, looking at some mapping. And finally, we can we can review as a full configuration list and send that to the backend system for, for processing. Um, so that's that's kind of in a nutshell where, where we're focusing the, the app finder portion of, of the Merlin concept. And um, as as we do this, you know, we've we've had um had some really good success points already within you know a, a really good handful of customers that we that we work with. And the the, the value statement that we've derived so far is really around what's out there, what's accessible, and how easily can I implement it? You know, how quickly can I get these things in front of real users? And especially, you know, to, to Adam's point, and maybe you want to jump in as well, on the on the App Finder tool itself, you know, this is enabling business transformation. It doesn't mean you don't need a functional team to help rationalize some of those applications that are out there. All we can do from a technical standpoint with an STO3N report is make sure that those T codes and those apps that have been tagged by SAP match together and we can start to analyze those. That's why we're doing that. You know, we can we can slice and dice and we can look at the different filters that we can bring in. We can select individual applications, but you you're still gonna need that that business knowledge 
and and that assessment to make sure the right applications are being activated for a business process you know whether it's fit the standard whether it's um whether you see a differentiation point et cetera et cetera yeah the only thing i'll, I'll add here um is we we have had a, a couple of different customers where where we actually were doing a fiori app assessment specifically for uh lighthouse apps right so and there's only a, a hand i say handful probably 56 to 60 lighthouse apps in total um but that's a good place to start because those those lighthouse apps are relatively um they're very differentiated um meaning they're a translytical app so you can not only carry out a transaction but it also has analytics built into it um and so while we were doing that the customer goes this is fantastic this is great but we want to take on everything and look at every single um transaction possibility that there was and as we started moving through this um through these couple few customers we noticed it was extremely laborious um and in using multiple resources to go out and and pull together this type of information and so that's what the the what really instigated this this type of dialogue uh, between John and myself and and the team that we have of saying, hey, listen, what can we do to make this a lot more simple, standard, and efficient in our in our assessments? And just from that standpoint alone, um, as we've done this, um, some of those uh, some of those assessments that were originally scheduled for three four weeks. Um, the actual analysis component is literally done now within a day and a half total, right? So we're we're scraping out a whole bunch of of time and making our time more valuable with our our customers and clients moving forward, so that we can actually get to uh, what they're interested in and trying to find their problems quicker, as opposed to spending a whole lot of time doing a lot of the back end type of work that that is absolutely necessary. However, um, it could be automated. And this, that's where we're at. And we're really excited about what the, the next versions, uh, 3.0 are coming out here in the next few weeks, I think will be done with the testing, but then there's gonna be Fiori 4.0 and 5.0 and 6.0 coming on the backside as we start learning and growing and doing more things together with our customers that we find more, more value for them. So, absolutely. Uh, I think with that, we should probably switch over to Q and A. But quick yep. teaser on on some 4.0 functionality possibly is, um, you know, what what do we do with all those Z transactions that come up? You know, how do we how do we make sure that we can adjust user experience to ZT codes that have been customized over the years? Um, but yeah, I think I think with that, you know, I'll just I'll I'll go down to our our thank you slide here, but. Um, so it looks like there's a couple of questions in the in the chat that we'll jump into. We've got about six or seven minutes to to be able to jump into any other questions as well. So maybe I'll I'll have you do the first one, Adam. I'll I'll read it out and then we both kind of jump in. But um, okay. the, I'm just going through it. I'm not seeing the question. Yeah, let's see. Here, I'll I'll read it for you. <laughs> okay. Um, the the first one is in your experience. When is Merlin Fiore usually addressed during the S4 HANA migration or after the migration is completed? So yeah, th this is a, a, a consulting 101 answer, right? It depends. <laughs> so um, so it, it can be done on the front side. So for instance, if you're doing some planning of saying, hey, listen, we're getting ready to do some S4 uh, migration, and you're wanting to take advantage of Fiori apps moving forward, um, you can absolutely do that on the front side. Um, it just so happens uh, at, in our experience, a lot of times we don't get brought to the table until after they're done with the actual technical migration um, and saying, hey, listen, we want to investigate what Fiori actually does and how the user experience can change. So I, I think the answer is it. It does depend, and it, you can do it in, in in both instances. Yeah, definitely, definitely agree. And, you know, we we see. I don't know the 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 percentage split, but it is fairly split on when we get engaged. You know, we we love to be engaged in that initial conversation. 
you know, when the migration is being planned so we can go through the assessment and really, really make sure UX is being addressed. Um, but the number of folks that, that then come after migration is completed that go live has been hit and say, wow, we, we really need to focus on user experience as an outcome here so we can continue our innovation path is, is huge. Um, all right, let's see, next question there. Um, I'm just sending this one in the chat. Uh, somebody had a question, what, what is the meaning behind BTP? So that's business technology platform. It's uh, SAP's cloud, cloud tool set. You know, the Honda database is hosted there in the cloud. Um, a lot of app dev tools like business application studio, SAP build that just got announced as a low code tool. Um, a lot of AI innovation type tool sets are there. So the robotic process automation and, and other services. Um, SAP Analytics Cloud, all the analytics pieces are, are a part of the BTP platform as well. Uh, let's see. Another one is, oh, the warehouse management applications running off of SAP EWM only. Um, warehouse wise was built with EWM in mind. So whether you have an embedded or a standalone version of EWM, the warehouse management apps like the shipping and receiving applications were, were built for more of a, a WM scenario. So. Uh, a little bit of both there, and and we're actually working on some backlog to see see where warehouse wise uh, EWM and WM or Stocker Management S4 are kind of coming together with those with, with those analytics fields to make sure you can do a mapping in between both those systems. We've we've run into some some folks that definitely run um, a mix match scenario in their warehousing, and so they'll have EWM standalone in a few plants or warehouse locations and still run some standard WM or stocker management functionality from, um, from within the S4 tool set too. Oh. Let's see, there's, uh, let's see another one here. Um, okay, so from, okay, at the end is the app finder app doing the configuration in the backend or does it generate the documentation for the follow-on teams to configure the app? So this is this is a really good distinction between release one <laughs> and release three. So we we needed to start with the documentation piece. Uh, we we needed to make sure we were capturing all the right fields and all the right information to be able to activate that stuff automatically. And so within the versioning, our release one tool that we ran was really for that assessment phase. And that assessment phase was let's look at the apps that are out there. Let's match match the T codes together and let's give our internal teams, as, as well as our customers, a really good configuration document to just run with. Um, what we're testing right now is the full automation of that. So we're actually connecting to the backend system remotely. We're actually going into ECC or S4 via Cloud Connector. And we're looking at the SICF services, the IWFND mate service transactions, the OData services, and all of the things that we saw within the tool to be able to, to activate those things automatically. And so that's that's what we're testing right now. And that's that's one of the reasons why I couldn't show Fiori 3 Dido today is we're we're full, we're in full testing of that one today. That's that's exactly what what that one's gonna do. I don't know if you had anything there, Adam, as well. No, I'm looking forward to 3.0. It's <laughs> it's really slick. And let's see, I think those were all the questions in the chat itself um, that I saw. Um, I don't know if Amy or Kay, you saw any others before we wrap up here quick. Nope, I think you got them all. Okay. Well, um, so I'll, I'll bid my goodbye and then I'll let you, Adam. But yeah, thank, thanks very much, everybody, for, for attending today. You know, we, we love going through these sessions of showcasing what we're, what we're doing and, and where we're focusing. Obviously, mindsets, uh, kind of our, our bailiwick and our, our experience level is how do we create an amazing corporate UX experience for, for everyone in the enterprise? So as you're using SAP, as you're using other tool sets within the company, we want to make sure that that holistic employee experience is met to the highest degree possible. And so that's we, we think this is a great tool to be able to, to start that on people's roadmap as they as they get more down the, the S4 roadmap line. So thanks very much from, from my side today. Yeah, once again, thanks thanks so much for joining us today. Um, from my standpoint, just as I mentioned in the opening, um, John and I will probably be jointly publishing the uh, a blog either late this week, first of next week. Um, it, it's primarily uh, done, but we want to probably update it based on some of the, the questions and things that we've gotten feedback on through, through this webinar. 
Uh, so look for that later this week, early next week um, uh, as well. But once again, thank you for joining us today and look forward to, to seeing you once again in another webinar or roundtable in the future. Thanks so much.